We head into Election Day. I sat down with Nancy Ankrum, the editorial page editor for the Miami Herald, and Steve Bosquet, who runs the editorial page for the Sun Sentinel. I asked them what were the stories they were going to be watching on Election Night. Well, local it will be whether Miami Day turns red. And it, there is a very, very good chance that it will. I think that the Republican candidates from DeSantis on down have done a very good job of one, cultivating their base, but two, also bringing non-base voters to their side in the form of independents and some Democrats. So that's what I'm keeping my eye on. Steve? I'm looking at a couple of things, uh, Jim. One of them is, um... To what extent do uh, do women show up at the polls in far greater numbers than men? You know, every poll suggests that this is going to be a potentially a landslide election for the Republicans in Florida and perhaps nationally, at least in Congress. And um, it seems like, you know, that the, the Democrats strategy, Charlie Chris strategy of relying and emphasizing so much the issue of abortion, uh, the only hope it would seem to me that Democrats have of pulling off a miracle here is if there is a tidal wave of women voters uh, showing up to vote, uh, including Republican and independent women. Nancy, earlier in the show, I spoke to uh, Carl Hernandez, and, and I asked her that very question, whether or not Democrats and Charlie Chris miscalculated by placing so much emphasis on the question of abortion and not really addressing economic issues, you know, the, the, the pocketbook issues that folks are really feeling uh, until pretty late in the campaign. The Democrats don't have a bench and they don't have a message and they don't have in Florida and they don't have their fingers on the pulse of what really, really matters to people on a day to day basis as they try to live their lives. Abortion is an important topic. However, versus the price of milk, I'm not sure that it is the number one topic for voters. I think COVID has defined Ron DeSantis in a way that, that resonates. It's not that we've 82,000 people have died. It's look at the 21 million who were able to survive and thrive. And so he's playing to, to those numbers. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that that, and that's also why he's, his popularity nationally is, is on the rise. But, you know, ha COVID certainly hangs over this election. He practiced the politics of defiance much in the way that Trump did too, but he did it actually with a real issue that was going to affect a real state. And I think that COVID um, does not hang over this election in the way maybe I or you thought it would. I think we are, Floridians consider themselves back to normal. And we're back to normal because of how he handled COVID. Now, we really aren't back to normal, and COVID is still here, and more than 80,000 people did die. But it was not an issue for him. Never mentioned, never, never mentioned the, de the deaths. Uh, never showed that kind of compassion we've come to expect from you know, other, other politicians who acknowledge the breadth of the loss. And it was all to his advantage. Nancy used the word defiance. I think that's a good word. Another word possibly along that same line, anger. There's, a, there's an anger in the electorate. There's a, there's a resentment in the electorate. Uh, and I think Ron DeSantis has found a way to tap into that. Do you, do you agree or do you think it's something more subtle than that, Steve? No, I think, he's, uh, I think he knows how to channel anger in a way that um, is effective with uh, his base. Um, the uh, the antagonism toward um, gosh wh where do we begin uh, the news media Disney local school boards local elected officials um, you know and on and on um, in terms of um, you know scoring points uh, with voters the uh, the incident in August the arrests in a couple of cases at gunpoint of the ex-felons who uh, had been given voter ID cards and who voted. And you had these uh, apologetic police officers saying, I'm just doing my job. I've got a warrant for your arrest. Um, 
You know, I, I think that uh, we're going to find out, we're going to know uh, by November 9th, um, the, the numbers will speak for themselves. Did it have a noticeable effect in depressing Democratic turnout, particularly in black precincts? where we've seen anecdotal news reports around the state that, 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 that black voters are, are intimidated and there's a reluctance to vote that wasn't there before. So um, channeling anger and utilizing every weapon at his disposal, we haven't talked about this very much, but, but the, the amount, the arsenal of, of political uh, implements that an incumbent has is, is pretty awesome. I, I think the hurricane, uh, tragic and horrifying as it was for so many Floridians. But the, the hurricane had the effect of sort of recasting this whole race for governor because it allowed Ron DeSantis to be shown as a leader in really a non-political sort of way. Nancy, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about the issue that Steve just raised about depressing turnout. You know, I look at depressing in two two definitions of the word. What he's referring to is depressing turnout from those, particularly in the African American community, who may feel intimidated. I also think Ron DeSantis's overwhelming message on the air and this just this feeling that he is going to win so dramatically. It is also depressed. Democrats to the point where they don't want to come out and and actually vote. Talk to me a little bit about any of that. Yes, I think that those arrests were by design and that they are having the exact effect that this administration wants, which is to intimidate um, African-American voters, some African-American voters from uh, going to the polls. And as for depressed Republicans, well, Sure. Or Democrats. I'm depressed sorry. Democrats. Depressed Democrats. Trust me, I haven't met a depressed Republican in a while. <laughs> sure, they're depressed, but they have only themselves to blame, don't they? In many ways, they really have only themselves to blame. And in, in just so many ways, again, in not having a message uh, that really resonates, uh, in not knowing how to fight back against the label, they're socialists. You know, they were named socialists in 2020. And you would think that in two years, they'd come up with a really good comeback. They have not. Um, in many ways, they have only themselves to blame. And again, being out of power for so very long just leaves them without a foundation but they also have failed to build up their foundation. When we come back, there is a major question on the ballot that could affect your child's education. And as I discussed at the top of the show, money is one of the driving factors in this year's election. We talked to a candidate who is absolutely getting crushed by special interest dollars. You will want to hear what she has to say. Stay with us.